Merciful God, we gather together, offer you our praise and thanksgiving for the unfailing love you have shown toward us generation after generation, and for the compassion you shower upon us day after day. You alone are our God. We are your people. We, we pray that your, your Holy Spirit move among us as we worship. Open our hearts and our minds to see you at work among us, encouraging, challenging, uplifting, and inspiring as each one has needs. May our worship bring honor and glory to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. This week is Mark one, chapter yeah, Mark chapter one, verses nine through fifteen. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized of John in Jordan. And straightway coming up out of the water, opened, and the Spirit like a dove dispersed descending upon him. And there came a voice from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. And immediately the spirit driveth him into the wilderness. And he was there in the wilderness 40 days, tempted of Satan, and was with the wild beasts. And the angels ministered unto him. Now after that, John was put in prison. Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye, and believe the gospel. Would you pray with me for a moment? Spirit of the living God, let us feel your presence in our midst. Let us hear your voice whispering into our hearts that we are loved, that we are yours. 
Open our ears and our minds to hear the good news of your Son, Jesus, fresh and new again. May the words of my mouth and the meditation in all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our Rock and Redeemer. Amen. Every religion has ways of talking about transformation. Repentance, conversion, even uh, being illuminated. We all feel the stirrings within us of the need for change, but it's not always easy to do. Change is hard. In Mark's simple way of putting things, we hear in a, in a few short verses how Jesus came from obscurity, was baptized, spent a time alone with God in the wilderness, and when John's ministry was over, Jesus emerged to start his own. Land is our wilderness time. And if we are hoping to turn our hearts toward God, this Lenten season, we must start with transformation. Spiritual transformation, though, often begins with brokenness. That's why change is so hard. It starts with deep need, hunger, wrestle, real pain and, and suffering. And how those are the very things we're trying to avoid. And yet, during the season of Lent, we are called to go and look into our pain, our suffering, our wounds, our, our struggles, and not only look at them, but recognize them, and even feel them again. Spiritual transformation begins with the deep understanding of our own spiritual poverty and a desire for intimacy with God. Land is a season for the vulnerable creatures whose wilderness journeys are never easy or straightforward. It's a season of shadow, a season when our certainties go into the fire and burn burn down to ash. It is a season of vulnerability, honesty, humility, and yes, penitence. This is this time is not about uncheckable, unbreakable superheroes. This is not a season for the morally superior, impeccable Christian life. Land is about being, being honest with each other, being honest with ourselves. Land is about seeing the Jesus of the desert, the Jesus that struggled in the wilderness, that heard and hungered and wept and thirsted and suffered and questioned. We need to know that he wrestled with real demons and real dangers during those 40 days of temptation as alluring as it might be to cling to a divine superhero, we need to hear the story of Jesus. The story of Jesus that endured the drag 
where in the Holy Spirit, Satan, wild beasts, and angels recited together. Because my friends alone will never survive such a dangerous road. But with a companion who knows the way through and the way out, we can and we will. A couple of details stand out to me in Mark's story. First, Jesus didn't choose the wilderness. It's not like Jesus wanted to play survivor for 40 days and went into the desert to prove how strong he was. No. The Spirit of God drove him there. The Spirit compelled him, forced him, pushed him into the desolation of a wild and unsafe place. Jesus didn't want to go. And it is very possible that he resisted. But the Spirit drove him, drove him there anyways. So, Pastor, what are you saying? This means that God wills bad things to happen to us? That God wants us to suffer? No, I don't think so, and I don't believe that. But could it be? Could it be, though, that God is ready to teach and shape and redeem us even during the most barren periods of our lives? That's what I'm wondering. This latter question sounds more accurate to me. Because in the startling economy of God's kingdom, even a dangerous desert can become holy. Even our wilderness wanderings can reveal the divine to us. It happened to Moses. It happened to Elijah. It has happened to all of us. It is in our, wilder in our wilderness wanderings that we have heard the voice of God calling us. This is not because God takes pleasure in our pain. This is simply because we, the world, people, live in a chaotic, fragile, and broken world that includes deserts. Not everything is a valley. And because we have a promise that God will shepherd us through those deserts and lead us to green pastures and fresh waters. Maybe it's strange to find this detail comforting, but maybe we should. Because it rings true to life. Most of the time we don't choose to enter the wilderness. We don't volunteer for pain, for loss, grief, danger or, or terror. But the wilderness happens anyway. Whether it comes to us in the guise of a devastating pandemic, a uh, completely unexpected winter storm, a frightening hospital stay, a broken relationship, a hurting child, or a loss of faith and connection with God, 
the wilderness appears in our lives. And sometimes it is, it is God's own spirit who drives us there. The other part that stands out to me from this scripture is the following. Our wilderness journeys sometimes last a long while. The sense we get from Mark's Gospel is that Jesus experienced each day as a battle of mind, spirit, and body. Maybe the hours stretched into years and the nights felt endless. But was it Einstein who said, put your hand on a hot stove for a minute and it seems like an hour. Sit with the pretty girl for an hour and it seems like a minute. For an impatient, quick fix culture like ours. The wilderness can be daunting because we tire and despair very quickly. And so we start wondering, when is, when is my pain gonna end? Why are my prayers going unanswered? Where is God in the world, in my life right now? But is that the question that we should be asking? Perhaps we need to ask a harder question, which is, why did Jesus need the wilderness? Why do we need the wilderness? And I'm gonna tell you why. New Testament scholars explain that the literary genre of gospel was invented by Mark. However, Mark's writing style is rather rudimentary. His education was limited. He was more of a public speaker rather than, than a writer who, who wrote in, in beautiful uh, prose. Mark, Mark tells it like it is, like he's speaking to you. For Mark, the good news begins with Jesus' baptism. There's no poetry in Mark's gospel. There's no Magnificat. There are no visions, no announcements. No stars in the sky or wise men coming from the east. No shepherds in the field and angels illuminating the, the, the sky, the night. No. There is no time for that. It seems to me that for Mark, what matters is that when Jesus rose from the waters of baptism, the heavens tore open and God affirmed Jesus' life loud and clear. You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. But what I'm wondering about is this. Did his sense of identity and belonging waver as Jesus' wilderness wanderings stretch into week two? 
week three, week four. Did the Son of God have to keep reminding himself who he was? Did he have hours or days or weeks when he forgot? When the tempter got to him, every time it asked, if you're the Son of God, if you are the Son of God, if you are the Son of God. No, it didn't. It never got to Jesus. But how many times it gets to us and we start questioning if we're loved, if we are cared, if someone cares for us, if we are a child of God. At his baptism, Jesus heard the absolute truth about who he was. That was the easy part. The much harder part came in the desert, in the wilderness, when he had to face down every vicious, mocking assault on that truth. And as the memory of God's voice faded with the passing of time and the isolation of the wilderness played tricks on Jesus' heart and mind, he had to learn in the wilderness that his belovedness would still hold. My dear brothers and sisters, as we begin our journey into land, May we experience the companionship of the Christ whose vulnerability became his strength. May we enter with courage the deserts we can't choose or avoid. May those stretches amidst, amidst the wild beasts Teach us who really, who we really are. The precious and beautiful children of God. And when the heavens whisper the name beloved into our ears, may we listen and believe them. May we listen to those words in the valley, may we listen to those words on the mountain, may we believe it in our hearts. Thank you.
this banqueting table. This is a table of hospitality and sharing and of celebration. We break bread and pour wine because these are the gifts that strengthen us, that strengthen our journeys, that strengthen our lives together. This banquet reminds me of our common humanity and our common need for just relationships. Together, let us be a community that not only issues the word, but also walks the talk. Everyone is welcome at this table. This is not our table. This is Christ's table. Dear Jesus, our Savior and Creator, we come to you at your table during these difficult times. But this is where we are reminded of your difficult times and the agony you endured for our salvation. We partake of the bread, which symbolizes the body which was broken for us, and we drink from the cup of grace, mercy, and forgiveness. We thank you, Lord, for all you have done for us, and ask that your good will is communicated by us, testimony of your love, as we pray the prayer you taught us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we have been forgiven. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Gracious Father, we give you praise And thanks for this holy communion The body and blood Of your beloved Son The body is broken God's love Poured open to make us new Lord, make us new Abba Father, we bless your name And take part in this holy communion Make us all one To love like your son The body is broken God's love poured open To make us new Lord, make us new Lord, make us.